So here we are with Ask Alexis for Stay Woke Wednesday. We're doing this once a month. We're super committed, um, especially in this group, because raising your frequency, keeping a high vibration entails for us to be fully aware, present, in connection, in oneness. So you can always, you know, part of why I wanted to do this too is because I know when I, well, I shouldn't say when I was, I am still learning and unlearning, it's, I, I know that I need to um, have a comfortable space to be able to ask the questions that, um, hi, Victoria. That's why I was just responding to her. Hi. I was like, so if you notice, I keep looking away. It's because I have the comments open on my phone so I can see them. It's not because I'm, I'm fully present. Me same. Yeah. Cause I'll look here and here. No, we're good. So yes, yeah, so, um, your questions, um, matter. Your questions are not stupid. They're really important and they're a part of why we're here. This is why we're doing this. I really want to not only ensure that this community stays safe and in integrity and is inclusive, but I also want to make sure that it's forward moving and that we are doing everything that we can to raise our frequency and vibration. And this is a part of it. So we did say, you know, if you have questions, post them, you can post them here. Hi, Pam. Um, you can post them here. You can DM me if you're ever, you know, if you're uncomfortable, even after today, after we talk and you think, oh, I should have asked this. Just email me. You can email clientcare at GinaNicole.net. We're keeping a running list. So we don't have a whole lot of questions today. So we, but we do have one that we're going to, that we're going to focus on and answer. Um, and we also wanted to both remind you that, um, you know, now is not the time to also back out of this conversation. This conversation is not done. It's just beginning. So if you're getting comfortable in, I like to even change that. It's just continuing. Um, this has been a centuries long battle that has been going on. And so this is just this iteration of this conversation, but remember that the only way that we don't have this conversation going on in the future and for centuries is to actually stay committed to the work now falling off of being committed to the work thinking that it's solved is what i'm asking people not to do don't i get that it's tough work and i'm not saying don't give yourself grace in the process of doing your work you do you know life does happen and you do get to have more than just anti-racism work in your life trust me I do too um so but please don't tire out this is not, like if you are tired now then you did nothing for the fight and all that all then and all those emotions you experienced were useless yeah we got it this is like we're just oops excuse me excuse me we got to stay in it we got to keep our heads in the game we have to keep our heads in the game we have to stay in it and and I, I can't stress enough that this is such an important part of high frequency. This is such an important part of high vibe. It is such an important part. So please, yeah, stay with us. Um, Tanya's saying, absolutely. So let's talk about that question. And it's so, you know, it's so interesting because I was reflecting this morning on trust and acceptance and forgiveness. And the question that we, that we had is on forgiveness. And um, yeah, it, kind of, it popped up after our last conversation. Um, so I want to talk about that. I want to ask Lexus about that. What are your thoughts on that topic of what came up? So what the, I believe the question was like, how did I personally get to a place where I can forgive and trust and have it basically what it meant to me was forgive and trust and have connected, committed relationships with. And the response that I have for that is interesting. I had a different response then than I have today, but so I'll give my response then, and they do both go together today, but I, I've been med too meditating on trust, so I have some thoughts about that, um, and I'd love to hear some of the frequency keys thoughts about that. But so first, I am a spiritual being having a Black human experience, and I am a person who believes in duality and that existence is enough. And so I don't necessarily subscribe to forgiveness because forgiveness means that there has been a judgment of something being wrong or right. And I believe that things are beneficial or not beneficial to the goal at hand, to my existence. Depend, you know, it depends on which context you're looking at it. But forgiveness is a way that I can personally unleash my pain, right? That I get to choose to set down my pain but that really just means that I'm offering grace or I am giving grace 
to that experience and understanding that it has its own source and cause and conditions that created it. It is, some, it is the effect of some other cause, just like whatever was a violation of me is an effect of some other cause. And I'm a person who likes to be at the source of that cause. So that's my answer from then, right? Like right and wrong are only opinions on what is. So forgiveness is like a moot point. It's just things are what they are and you can do what I want you to do to feel better, for make me feel better. You can't make me feel better. And I can choose to feel better or not. Um, but I can't change the past. I can only change the future. So how I move into the future brings me to my next reflection on trust. This is something that's been mulling over in my consciousness all week. But for me, in my experience of trust, it's actually an illusion. Mm. In the sense of when I consider the concept of trust in my mind and the way that I apply it, what I'm actually seeking is to give someone the opportunity, to choose to give someone the opportunity to be responsible with my vulnerabilities And then the feeling that I want in return for that choice is a sense of belonging, safety, and acceptance. Mm. And I want people to be consistent with their creating of a sense of belonging, safety, and acceptance. And so how that applies is that now, instead of looking for people that I can trust, since that's an illusion that I get to like pop in and out of dealing with in my physical experience, I look for people who are consistent, <laughs> who um, create senses, who believe in and their espouse values and the values that they live up to are creating senses of belonging, safety, and acceptance. And those are the character traits that create the effect of being able to have that feeling of trust or be, that I can give, choose to give the responsibility of my vulnerability. Mm, that's beautiful. And they're all so tied in. And that's what I was reflecting on today it's really interesting because i was reading um, i was reading a book um the goddess way it's so great you know it's a i have my own things about goddess and the word you know but we won't go into that uh but i was reading this book and it really it was very moving there was a quote in there or an excerpt i should say in there about how if we have acceptance then um, is forgiveness really needed? Because then we're not like attaching to an outcome. You know, it was really, it was beautiful. It actually brought tears to my eyes. Um, This is, yeah. And if you guys have questions, ask. Like, this is why we're here. Like, please ask the questions. I got some stuff that might spark some questions. Um, Oh yeah, let's put that out there. I do have a question, but you put that out there. No, no, let's answer that question first. No, put that out there because I want to get the conversation started for them and then I'll ask the question that came in. So one of the things that I've been noticing in my work in allyship is people's codependency traits or tendency to trauma bond or their own trauma stories are showing up in their expression but the way that that impacts BIPOCs or their the Bi- or black and brown, black and indigenous people of color, if you don't know what BIPOC is, um, but the way that that impacts the BIPOCs with whom they're in relationship with has a different lens than it would if it was just, you know, two people of the same culture playing out their trauma stories. Because the impacts of that trauma story is felt systemically. Mm. especially if you think about it in like a co-worker situation where you guys are on even footing right but say one person gets promoted and then that triggers a story of maybe you grew up in a household where there was a sibling who was absolutely evil and did no wrong and then now you're triggered just into your playing of those dynamics you start doing some stuff to sabotage without knowing it maybe just under the guise of i just want to let you know of some concerns i'm having or something like that, and you end up, and that plays out in a work environment. Or even if it's just office gossip, and now this person's reputation is tarnished because it's easier to tarnish their reputation because they're a BIPOC. Even though you just did your own normal, I grew up in this toxic-ass family behaviors, it has a different implication if the person on the other end of your toxic behaviors is a BIPOC or a person of a marginalized community. Or if they're... uh, Asian and Island Pacificers and East Asians, if they are LGBTQIA, having that other marginalized identity means that when you start playing out them toxic behaviors, 
that happened. And I'm not, I don't even mean, I'm only saying toxic because it draws people's mind to what I mean, the shadow side of things. That has, like, that's a part of being responsible for your privilege too, because there's a privilege to be able to do that without, without as harsh of consequence, without having to have your race and the perception of your race be added to it. Mm. Oh, that is good. Does that bring up anything for you, for us, for you, for us that are here watching? Okay, this is maybe, and yeah, maybe what well, we'll see if some questions come up on that. So here's a question that came in. They didn't feel comfortable, which again, there's no stupid questions. There's no silly questions, but they didn't feel comfortable um, sharing it because they feel that it's a silly question. Um, but this person says, I truly do not see color. I believe that from the depths of my heart. I just don't see color. I want to see the good in everyone and see everyone is equal. I'm not sure where to even begin with this. So this is, it's like, it's a little bit, it reminds me of white exceptionalism, but what is, what are your thoughts on this? So, um, not seeing color, that thought in, a, in and of itself is a little bit problematic because there's a reason that you don't see color or you're choosing not to see color, right? Like to, if you say, oh, I don't see color. Well, I happen to be a brown person who is a black person in the U.S. society. So like when I look at you, I do see a white woman, but what are the stories that are behind that? What is the lived experience that's behind that? It is wonderful that you see the good and excellence in everyone, but you are also not the world. You are just your world. And so when you don't see color and you look at it from that lens and you give other people that same credit, you're not seeing disproportionate impacts, even how I just mentioned in those trauma behaviors playing out it has disproportionate impacts on people of color because they're not the dominant community. So you might not see color, but you show sure ain't perfect. And so the ways that your imperfections come out, right? The ways that we all, I have them too. Like I'm a, I can be sassy and snappy. Although lately I've been getting a lot of feedback that I'm compassionate and kind, which I've been working really hard at those because I prefer that existence. But I do, I can be snappy and, when I, snappy and when I'm angry, I'm angry. And I have hurt people's feelings because of that. I, you, know, you know, like there is, I made a crass joke where I called one of my close white friends an N-word lover. Now, I'm gonna say this. I don't remember saying it. She says I said it and she didn't talk to me about it for a couple months. But she says that I said it. The other person that was there doesn't remember saying it. However, with the way that I hold the concepts in my mind and how sometimes if I'm in the circle of friends and we're drinking and we're doing stuff, like we're drinking and smoking and, and having fun, I might have said a joke to illustrate a point that was crass. I, might, I may have said it, right? Um, she, for the last couple of years, have exclusively dated like, and I'm not justifying my saying it. it was tactless and crass. I'm showing that I make these kind of mistakes too. Yeah. But she didn't talk to me about it at all until I got into a position. This is the story. <laughs> until I got into a position where we had to work together. And then because of my integrity, I, you know what I'm saying, I own that I like, hey, impact and intention are different. Let me tell you how the concepts are held in my mind. I hope that you understand that, you know, I haven't lied to you thus far. This isn't something that I'm going to do, but it's hard for me to go m deeper into that in validating your feelings mm -hmm. when I don't remember because you didn't talk to me about it for months. And we have talked since then. We've texted back and forth and everything was light and airy. So it's never, and that happens. So Back to the answer of that question. Not seeing color does not mean the impact of your decisions are not affected by people who are of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great answer. And I do think that's what, you know, that's what I'm hearing that I know, like I have a really good friend and he said to me, thank you for seeing my color. Thank you for finally acknowledging my color. Thank you for seeing me, right? And that felt, it was like, oh, 
Mm, like that, yeah, really, it moved my heart. Layla's saying it's true what she says about not wanting to see colors. I'm that way as well, but now I'm more looking at your auras, if that makes sense. That tells me everything. And it's interesting. I mean, Layla, that bring, you know, it brings up a really good point um, that, you know, it, because this is a part of, uh, as Alexa said, like sort of, and I'm not saying that what you're saying is problematic, and at the same time, it, it allows for a denial of systemic racism to exist. Yes. So yeah. it is problematic. I am saying it's problematic. I'm not saying that the way you live is problematic, but it's not true you don't see color. You just don't choose to be biased based on color. Mm -hmm. And that's a better statement of that. How is it that my race is the only color you don't see? Yeah. And, and I'm talking about in existence. Um, the only color you don't see, you see black, white, brown, purple, red, pink, aquamarine, teal, sea foam, all these other colors of the rainbow. But when it comes to the color of people, you don't see that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, so you're seeing like the color of auras and yeah, yeah, yeah. Only in this category do we say we don't see color. And I don't say it, but like only in this category do people say that. So what is really being meant? Because I am a wonderful caramel color with beautiful brown freckles. And I want you to see that. And if it's your cup of tea, admire it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Layla, I'd be curious, Layla. I'm curious um, what your thought is on this. I'm really curious. She, oh yeah, it's true, she's not wanting to see the color. I'm that way as well, but now I'm more looking at your auras, if that makes sense, that tells me everything. Now, this is really interesting because Layla's coming, you know, um, Tanya's saying, I think she's saying she sees the auric field first, the beauty inside, and lastly, the color of skin. Yeah. What's well, wrong with seeing the color of skin? It's, what's interesting about this is that Layla is not white. So that's what, you know, so I think that she, it's also a difference from her but perspective. I believe in aura. So if you're checking out my auric field and you can see something, I, how you navigate the world is fine. Mm -hmm. But why is it why do we have to say we don't see color because pizza historically and still to this day not just historically some people who do see color do harmful things with it and that's what we want acknowledged not people not seeing color i just don't want the color of my skin to be a problem yeah yeah and i do like how tanya is saying you know seeing the auric field first i think that that's beautiful um, yeah. you can certainly see the auric field first. Um, ah, sorry. And we, no, you're good. And, uh, but, but at the end of the day, like we do, you know, it's mind, body, spirit, right? It's mind, body, spirit. Spirit is the work with the auric field. And then we have to acknowledge what happens in the mind and we have to acknowledge what's on the body. Like that is what this whole group is all about. The cosmic trinity mind body and home and spirit you have those all i'm getting really dizzy this is good but you have all three planes and we have to acknowledge all three planes if we want to advance in all three planes in all three areas to be and evolve all three areas we don't concentrate on our frequency raise our vibrations or anything like that to stay the way things are right the, but everything has to be evolved and the evolution is not making everybody beige you know what I mean? Like the evolution is creating a space where everybody can be their full selves and fully express in who they are and feel safe doing so. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm curious to know what your um, thoughts are on, you know, because I, I brought it up. What is this? Um, nothing's in the outer first field. I get it. Yeah. I'm curious to know because I, um, I brought it up a, a bit ago uh, about, you know, the whole like with goddesses, but just cultural appropriation. Can we talk about that? Can you um, comment on cultural appropriation and why it's really, you know, I think in this community, in this niche, it, whenever we do spiritual work, we have to know about this. And some people don't, um, you know, I don't, like, for example, I have really been asking the challenging questions to my teachers. I've been looking at my communities that I'm learning from, um, my teachers that are teaching about things like chakras or, you know, like I, I'm really starting to look at that lineage and understand what I'm endorsing. But can you speak to cultural appropriation? I think that it's really important in the spiritual community. I think it's important um, in this niche. And That's a 
a, a tough question because I have so many of my own, like, there's these, there's these visceral opinions coming up that are a little unfiltered right now. Um, <laughs> so right. I'm going I'm, to I'm give one story. I have a, a friend who is East Indian and she teaches yoga and she has trouble in the yoga community because she's not white and the yoga community in the United States is a lot more white than mm -hmm. East Indian. But yoga is an Indian practice, right? It is, and I may be, I might get, be getting, like, I'm sure that it drills down to a lot more specific to where it comes from. But she's had people come up to her and ask her, does she, do they know anywhere where Christian yoga can be taught? See your face? Yes. What's Christian yoga? It shows exactly, exactly. There is no Christian yoga because yoga is not Christian. Right, so right, right. the thing with, as it relates to, I said that to say, I see the cultural appropriation. Honest. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I know it's a loaded question, but I did want to ask, I wanted to get your opinion. Um, and mainly because you guys so that you know too, it's an area that I'm challenging myself on. Like I said, I'm going to my teachers and I'm looking at who are they. That's what I want to know. And I don't know how to say why don't like what are white people's religious practices and why are they getting so tough in the others mm. and not that i have a problem with you getting in the others but i've been on this journey of discovering what white culture is separate from white u.s culture or white colonization culture and mm -hmm. i don't mean your European culture. I'm not saying Italian culture. I'm not saying all these things, but what it like, I, and I know how black, why black culture exists because our culture and heritage was ripped away from us and stolen and we could not practice our cultural practices. But when it's time to go in, I go to, into who I am and who I am is no one without standing on the shoulders of my ancestors that came before me, whether that be past lives and other souls that and those are different races and, and cultures but Absolutely. that's where my that's where the connection has previously been established so every religion every spiritual system has a method of connection because spirit like there's to me there's not a monopoly on god source mm -hmm. whatever father mother everything god is to you there's not a monopoly on that and religious religions are systems of spirituality now we could talk about the people and what they've done with those religions those are man things but why why do you go into another's culture get all the benefits and all the juice out of it and all the the connection to spirit without ever then connecting to your own religion your own culturally religious practices seeing who you are because you are not Ayurvedic unless that was one of your other soul's lives. Yeah. And that is possible. I mean, it is possible. It is. And it I'm not. Absolutely is. Yeah. But there's a difference. I mean, there's a difference between like dipping in, grabbing what you want and taking it versus like really dipping in and honoring it and valuing it. Yes. And and, but, back but, to it. but if you find you got a Native American spirit guide cool what about the other ones and then why don't you have any of your own like why are they white do you have any white ones what does white mean to you what are what are the white religious practices if it's christianity christianity got a whole lot of systems of connection and deep meditation and prayer and eat this cracker to represent the body of jesus and drink this wine for the blood and the, let's use some astrology to find G, you know baby jesus by looking at the stars and bring him gifts of frankincense and myrrh like those aren't used in ritual ceremony so like why aren't you discovering what that which flows in your own dna now when you discover somebody else's maybe don't take it and make a business out of it. And I know that's hard to hear. Or if you do take it and make a business out of it, create an impact fund or something and give to the culture that you are making a business out of teaching their practices. Include a person whose culture that is, bring them on as a co-facilitator. Mm -hmm. Like there are lots of, I have my business coach and I'm a co-facilitator in her program. Uh, speak serve sell she has a social impact business modeling so there are many ways you can make social impact 
but you need to be doing something to pay homage to that culture or you are appropriating it. Yeah, that's just, it's huge. And you can still be benefited by it and you can still have the life benefits and the experience on the clearing of your different ethereal uh, energy, causal, all those different bodies. You get the benefit, but if you're getting the benefit while, while not being aware of, not caring about, or not benefiting the cultures that you have appropriated their things from, and check the box of cultural appropriator. Yeah, yeah, and really lean into this and just think, you know, I asked, I'll be really vulnerable and transparent. I asked my coach, I said, well, wait a minute, like I'm, because I really wanted to know, you know, because I, listen, a big part of my business is feng shui. I learned directly from Edgar Sutton, my friend, my elder. And um, he is, you know, he's not white. And I did, you know, pay him a lot of money for my education and I pay homage to him and I'm, in, you know, so, so it's not like I just dipped in and dipped out and still I know that I could do better. And when I was talking to my coach about it, I, you know, I was like really sitting with this and I was saying, okay, I'm Italian, like first and foremost, I'm first generation on one side of my family. I'm Italian and tarot actually came from Italy. Tarot originated in Italy and that's a part, it's also a part of what I do, I teach it. And, you know, and she just, she saw my thing, she saw me thinking, she saw my wheels straight and she said, Gina, Italians are not marginalized any longer. Like maybe they were at one point but they're not any longer, you know? And so this is like, even if they were at one point, because that's where my wheels were going, well, Italians were also like, everybody does terrible. But I would like to speak to that just a little bit. It's an it's a interruption, but it's a slight sidebar. Yeah, no, interrupt. So when you say that Italians are not marginalized anymore, but they once were. So this is the system of whiteness and white body preference that we live in. What happened is a lot of cultures traded the practice of their culture for the safety that whiteness provides. Mm. So when Italians were marginalized, it wasn't safe to be an Italian. The more and more they became included in whiteness, the more safety they got, the more not having to think about the stresses of being marginalized. And I'm not saying all of them, but the, the, the further away you get from this oppressive lifestyle, if you're just not a person who's actively making sure you care, making sure you maintain your connection, making sure you don't form unbiased judgments, making sure you're an anti-racism, anti-oppressor, you're then you just traded your whiteness you traded your culture for whiteness Mm. and safety and the safety that that provides which is the elusive allure of white privilege and how it is it not seeing color and not seeing these things these disparate treatments allows for that to be denied Mm, yeah good point but back to tarot. Wow. Sorry, I just wanted to interrupt with that. No, that was good. And that was really all. I mean, I wanted to just share with you all, like my vulnerability, you know, what a learning point was for me in terms of appropriation and tarot and blah, 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 like my own journey with it. Um, and also feng shui and knowing like where I can do better to pay homage and talk about my elders and get back to my lineage and, you know, but really looking at some of the areas that we tend to like dip into and even, you know, like I asked one of my teachers for her lineage and I still haven't heard an answer. And so I asked again and I still haven't heard an answer, you know, so it's like, okay, I need to continue to follow up. Like this is really important that we know all of these things. I mean, even for you that are here in my own, in my membership or my, like if you need to know that, reach out to me and ask me and I will give it to you. You know, it's like, I I hope that I'm doing a good job of this. Um, I want but even if you're not, you're still doing some of it. And if you find that there are better ways to do it, you'll just add those ways in the future. All I am. That's what this is all about. It's having the uncomfortable conversation, you know, and finding ways to get back and find, you know, it's, and this is, it's all, chakras is a really interesting one too, because I've learned from different teachers and it is an interesting one because there's been some spiritual teachers that have taught on the chakra system, but haven't done like really deep diving and their whole business has fallen apart. Like I'm really mindful on where I um, teach about the chakra system and how, you know, I really am mindful uh, because I know that it's a whole system that we can't, you know, we don't want to necessarily just mess with. 
you don't want, you know, it's a really, um, as, as a lot of practices and rituals that come out of different cultures. So I wanted to bring it up today because it was something that, you know, has been up for me recently and being vulnerable, it's something that I'm always working on doing better. And so maybe you guys might have questions on it too. Um, so thank you for that answer. And it, or I'm not seeing any other questions. Do you guys see I'm not either. I would like to see some more. I see we have some people watching, but I, I just want to say this. I am all about our shared future, our shared existence right now, and making that more cohesive. Yeah. I, I don't know as much as I want to know about many world cultures, and I'm on my own journey of discovery, and even what my culture means to me. That is a human thing. That's a part of your spiritual presence in your human physical body, whatever color it is, mm -hmm. right? To me, you cannot know who you are without knowing these things because they are a part of that which shaped your physical existence. You were present in your grandmother's womb once she became pregnant with your mother. So whatever culture your grandmother experienced was starting to shape you from the time she became pregnant with your mother and her grandmother's experience shaped her going back and back and back and back and his too, right? Like we were all present in our grandparents' wombs and that was true for our parents all these generations before. So culture is a part of what shapes us. And I know I mentioned like trust being an illusion race is an illusion, money is an illusion, all these things, there's lots of things that are illusions that we participate in with time, mm -hmm. that we participate in with our physical bodies, so that the, the identifying something as an illusion is really more of an identification for you to choose how you interact with it, not to shame someone's perspective or their existence or whatever way you want to use it when you are using it for shame you are not beneficial to your goal at hand that does not make me feel acknowledged or like my humanity is seen because you tell me my race is an illusion yeah it, and we have to hold space i mean as light workers we have to hold space this is where you know this is where we have to do this i mean we don't i look at it as like we don't have an option not if we really truly want to reach the light um, we don't have an option. We have to look at this. Um, I'd love to lead um, with some action steps for y'all. I think that that would be really good. And so part of what my challenge is, and Alexis, if you have some, you know, that we can sort of work on over this month, part of what my challenge is going to be for you is to actually look at areas where you might be culturally appropriating um, whatever, wherever that is going to be in your life. And I'm also going to ask, like, I'd love to know, you can comment here or you can DM me or whatever, but I'd love to know, like, are you still having these conversations? Are you in the conversation? Are you, you know, are you getting, if you are white, are you comfortable in your white privilege? Are you, you know, like what's happening? Like, I'd love and to- And it is a privilege to not to choose to have these conversations. It's a privilege. Yeah, that is white privilege. You know, so those, that's my challenge or invitation for you all that are watching. Are you having the conversations where, and then look at, you know, challenging your teachers, challenge, you know, whatever, wherever you're getting the information from really looking at appropriation and it's because it happens a lot in the spiritual community. Um, and so I invite you to look at that, but um, yeah. Do you have anything that you'd like to leave everybody? I, I have a few things. Um, one, I emailed you a worksheet called authentic identity questionnaire. I would like to challenge your community to actually answer those questions that are on the worksheet with the idea of their cultural culture answering them. So one, there, it has several prompts. I am that I am. And then it has some questions that are on that. There it is. Um, some questions that are of a deeper level here. Um, but answer them to like, there's no right or wrong answers. You're just trying to get a deeper connection with yourself and 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 your own authenticity but remember the lens in which you're looking at this through is your culture is how the your culture plays out in these things my second um challenge or or call to action or request is that you sign up for my workshop that i'm doing um <laughs> that is a shameless plug and but 
in the in the workshop what is called actively authentic allyship um it my website will be in the comments it has my landing page there's also a free mini uh video on microaggressions against bipoc so you can watch that video at a minimum and arm yourself with just some more things to avoid and and to look out for but it is called actively authentic allyship it's a 10-week course and what we do is we go on the journey of becoming an actively authentic ally so we're first active with our own authenticity we discover who we are who we want to be what our allyship journey looks like to us then we begin to learn the th facts of history and the things that go along with it mm. but if you i it, but a part of the first few weeks of the course will be the participants learning and educating me about their culture other than whiteness and where that culture played out in whiteness. That's awesome. Yeah, that really, I love that. That really ties into exactly what we were um, talking about. And that um, Alexis's website is up above, yep. it's on the title here. Um, yes, it's cool. just ask Alexis, www.askalexis111.com. There's also a link on the website where you can just follow me on Facebook, but you can also follow me at Ask Alexis. Um, I'm on my avatar that's on the top of the worksheet is there. Um, that microaggressions video, I've heard tons of positive feedback about it. And I, because like I said, I'm on my own mission of learning to be an ally for other marginalized members of the community. You've been doing a lot, yeah. I, um, I posted it in here, but the three videos from the three-day um, Actively Authentic Ally Challenge are on that in the, their circle videos right there for you to be able to watch them. And there's resources in those videos um, to be able to expand your LGBTQIA knowledge, right? I learned a lot about how to coexist and make trans and non-binary people feel more comfortable, and I still do not know enough. <laughs> This is great. And you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just say for all of you that are in here, I imagine that you have some sort of, you know, you're wanting to raise your frequency to activate your intuition to really ignite your intuition. Um, and you know, the more, you know, the more you learn, our intuition has to have data to pull from. If you want to really help people, you have to do your work to really understand people and traumas and learn. So I think this is, yeah, I think it's great. And it's really important because if you just stay in your comfort zone, you're only ever going to attract people and clients to help that are right there with you. And transformation is only so minimal, you know, it's like, do, yeah, really dive in, do because we're connected on a frequency, on a vibrational what level. What you afraid of? Yeah, there's nothing to be nothing to be afraid of at all. <laughs> so that, I mean, if we're really talking about frequencies here and we have control over them and the vibrate, what you going to be afraid of? Your guides, your higher self, your intuition? It's really good, yeah. It, and it's really important. Pam said, I'm going to complete the worksheet. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. I will too. I see Dakota too. That's Pam. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So thank you, Alexis. Thank you all for being here. If this has prompted any questions for you, I have a running list. So please just send in your questions. We're going to be doing this every month. This is important. The conversation. Because that's what staying committed to allyship looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So thank you. Thank you for teaching me. Yeah. Thank you. I love you all. We're going to stop the live stream and um, we'll see you. Well, we'll see you soon, but we'll see you again next month, Alexis. Yes. All done. How do you think?